we align with the Basketball Australia system of play. So again, we break the shot clock down into eight seconds. So the first eight seconds, whether it's after a score or after a miss, we're looking to disrupt. So, you know, it's pressure up the floor. It's taking away things that Curtis talked about, like early kick aheads and things like that. We want to take that away from the offense. Um, so that's the first eight seconds. The second eight seconds is discipline. So containing that penetration so we don't have to help, we don't get into rotations, receiver spots aren't open, we're not fouling, we're not giving up open shots. So that's our discipline phase. And then the last eight seconds is desperation. Like how do we get a stop in these last eight seconds, whether that's scramble, whether that's fight through a screen, whether that's contain penetration, help, and ultimately boxing out and getting a rebound so we can go and work on the things that Curtis just spoke about. Want you guys to think about just looking at this group, there's a style of play like Curtis mentioned, and then there's, and I come from association land, then there's morphing it to the kids you have. So, I mean, when I look out there, I see speed, I see length, I see athleticism. So all the stuff we do defensively, you can tailor to the group you've got, which is the cool thing about coaching. It's not us just saying, you've got to do it this way. It's how do I morph what these guys are good at and what their strengths at to really help us defensively. Um, so what we'll do is we'll look at a few things. I want to build it up in the full court first and then we'll drag it back down to the half court. I want you to think about a couple of things while we're doing it. Defense to me is all about controlling tempo of the game. So how do I speed the game up when I feel like we need to? How do I slow it down when we need to? How do I cause a little bit of chaos for the opposition? I want to be the controller of the tempo, our team. So if we can do that by switching up our defenses and making subtle changes, we go a long way to helping our offense. Um, I also want you to think about how your defensive philosophies can align. So it's not about doing it exactly my way or this way, it's about morphing it to fit yourself. And then finally, is language. Now, when I get out there and we've got a point guard guarding the ball and we call it the dog, all right? Do you have to call it the dog? No, I, got in, I get in arguments with old coaches all the time that have different keywords for it. You know, it means the same thing. But what we really want to help is these guys. So when these guys roll into a BNSW trial and the coach says, hey, just dump in the dog for us look around like, what's a dog? You know, I don't, I don't see any dogs here. That's what helps them. So they just walk straight out, they go, yup, and they jump on the ball. So for us, we go, okay, that kid gets it. You know, like, that's a good start for us. We're not taking two steps backward to teach. So the terminology, while, you know, there's a million different phrases for different things, we're just trying to align so that we help these guys get on the same page. Um, so that's basically what we're looking at there. We'll start in the full court, I'll show it as a whole first, and then we'll break down some drills of how you might build it up to teach it, similar to what Curdo did. Uh, boys, can I please get those lights and darks? Can I please get a point guard on the elbow with defense? So light's got the ball. Can I get a four man inbounding for me, please? Can I get a five man at the top of the three point line opposite end? And then our two wings at halfway, please. Yeah, yeah, all being guarded, yep. James, I thought you were playing guard. So, the ball's here, yep. Point guard, so just start on the elbow for me. We got a defender for the four man boys. So, our first phase, disruption. All right, we're just gonna go through each spot. Uh, who's my opposite wing? Jump up to halfway for me. Thank you, buddy. All right, so, first thing is, we're gonna play it off a score so off an inbound so offensively they're trying to get the ball in quickly defensively our first man is the plug what jeremy here is going to do 
is he's gonna shadow the ball to one side. So you don't need to be all over the ball, you just need to make sure that we can't pass it that way. We can only throw it to this side. So we're directing everybody else behind us. All right, so our plug man will have another role, but again, we call it the plug. When I say to Jeremy at trials, hey, jump in the plug spot for me, he knows exactly where to go. Our point guard, right, whether there's one or two guys up here, we wanna make this a contest. You are our dog, all right? The dog's into it, they're hustling, they're causing chaos here, all right? We're putting pressure on the point guard at all times. Now, the goal here on an inbound for the offense is they want to catch, sweep and go and get into early kick aheads like Curdo just spoke about. We want to take that away. So our dog here, you're not denying, and again, you guys can absolutely throw some different things in. All we're doing is we're getting on the inside shoulder because Jeremy's telling me that he can't go that way. So we're getting a bar arm in his back. All right, we're a little bit of denial and we are forcing to dead corner. This is a little battle in itself. You get a victory defense if the offense catches facing away from their basket. So they catch it, they've got to take time to pivot. And you also get a victory if they're nice and deep and below the free throw line and you stay in front of them. So all we do, and I, I encourage my guys not to steal here because the worst thing that can happen with pressure Someone dives through a passing lane and we're beat and we're in trouble. So you just bar arm in the back, driving him down, just lead down for me, good. If you catch it here and you're in front, we're in perfect position to build pressure. That's a win for the defense right there. He's had to catch it, he's had to turn and look. We're in front, we're building a wall. So that's the first step in our dog. Now our dog, depending on who you've got, quicker guys, you might be able to get a little closer, build a little bit more pressure, but ultimately our dog's keeping us in front. Now, one thing I heard in a clinic that I watched not long ago and I really loved is if we're working on the basis of the shot clock, especially you 16s and 18s guys, we want to steal seconds in the backcourt. So, you know, takes him a second or two on the catch to pivot and face and have a look. One, two, Couple of dribbles to get over the four, three, four, five. By the time they cross halfway and those coaches want to run offense, you're now looking at 18, 17, 16 seconds in the shot clock. And we all know with junior kids basketball, getting them set up for an offense takes probably 35 seconds. So to only have 24 and then steal some seconds in the backcourt, not necessarily trying to get an eight second count, but I've just taken seconds off the clock. Now they're in there you know, offensive phase of like, they've got to create something. They're in a little bit of trouble. That's when we're putting the pressure on. Bad shots happen. And what do we do on bad shots? We can get out and work on those transitions that Curto spoke about. So the first one is dog, all right? Our plug man is really, really important. He's got to sprint to behind the line of the ball and then turn and be a helper. You're always using your hands. You're always seeing the ball and your man, all right? Now, in saying that, our dog knows that he can't get beat down the sideline. Why? Because the help's not there, the help's in the middle of the floor. So we jump to here, good, we can put pressure on, but we know our help with our plug man is plugging that gap, just like in a bath. They're plugging the hole there, you're plugging the gap, so that if you take two dribbles this way, good, you don't need to overcommit. Keep on coming back, 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 back. You just need to, what's your name? James, you just need to give James time to get back in front. So I'm just slowing down, keep coming. I'm slowing it down, giving you enough time to get back in front of him. Good, and then I stay with mine. That just allows you to stay in front of the ball. All right, just go two steps back that way for me. Our next spot on the wings. What did, offensively, what did we want to do? kick the ball ahead. Defensively, I want to take it away. So on the ball side, I can afford a little bit to be up the lane in denial, not letting that easy kick ahead go. Worst thing that can happen here is the ball goes over your head, but if they throw that kind of lob from there, 
I'd trust us to be quick enough and athletic enough as the ball's up in the air to get in front and protect the rim anyway. Cool that. So we're in denial on ball side. Taking away that early kick ahead. All right. Opposite, where do you think they would normally be? Anybody got anything? Yeah, yeah, so we want to be in a help position. So when the ball's that far away, especially in junior basketball, we can start to get, so offense stay there. Defensively, we can start to jump to help to the ball. So we're approximately one third from our man, two thirds from the ball. We're seeing both with our arms. So see both good, all right? And we're a secondary helper through the floor. The hardest pass, especially in junior basketball, for a smaller point guard to throw is that one. It's also a stealing opportunity. So defensively, we can corral this. I like to think that we build a wall up front. You know, you've got Jeremy there with length, showing size, building a wall, building a wall. We build our second wall here. These guys on offense have got to get through two walls before they get to our safety. If the ball reverses, defense naturally shifts. So the ball reverses. Now Jeremy is the dog. Again, the one place he can't get beat is sideline. So as we're going, Jeremy's got to try his best to turn him. You've got to jump to our plug position. We deny an early kick ahead. We jump off towards the middle of the floor. Still see him both. So basically, these positions are interchangeable. You've got your dog, you've got your plug, but as soon as the ball shifts, why we develop guys that can play one through five in every position and multi-skilled is that so that they can do all of these things. You can guard the ball with pressure. You can deny up the lanes. You can jump to one third, two thirds. You can plug a gap. You guys at the back, you guys are our eyes and talking everyone through everything. So you're our safety. You're talking to these guys of what side the ball's on, communicate with your teammates to get to denial or get to help, because the one thing we can't happen is as soon as this ball reverses and you stay on your man, we drive right through the middle, we have no help, no help, and we're in trouble then, we're in transition, we're in real lots of trouble. So we're trying to build those walls so that these guys have got to walk it up the floor. Now, if it does get beaten, throw it on. Just throw it on for me. Throw it up. Good. We're staying at home. So there's not really ever a point where we want to go and leave the key to go take this away. Even if you get beat, let's say you jump through a passing lane, you made a mistake, all right? We don't want to really leave the key. We're protecting house. All right, so that's how, you know, they, they can score out there, but they've got to be stiff. They might shoot an uncontested three, but this is high percentage, so we protect home. What you're doing at the same time is if you were up there a little bit, and let's say you're opposite right now. Good with that? So now if we've got someone coming at us, I'm doing two things at once. I'm protecting home, and I'm also screaming at my teammates as the ball's coming, you gotta get back, you're sprinting back to help me. So I'm calling him back, I'm helping, I'm sprinting guys back. We good with that? All right, just head back for me, boys. So, sorry, can you guys jump off and jump on the baseline for me? So, wings as well, yep, wings as well. So we've got our dog position, we've got our plug position, our wings are one third, two third, denial ball side, help side opposite. Basically, I like to align everything so it doesn't change for the kids. So same when we break down into our half court, you know, what's the first thing you teach is ball and then jump and help. It's the same in the full court. If the ball's not on your side, you're usually jumping to a help position. You know, you're not just worried about your man. And this pass across the court is the most dangerous one. It's where we can create stealing opportunities. All right, what we'll do, uh, sorry boys, actually jump back on for me. Jump back on, just sprint to those spots. Then how you control your tempo is by what you want to achieve. 
So there's little wrinkles here, and again, challenge you to think about your units, is how can I change that tempo? Right now, what I just kind of showed is building pressure, containing, slowing them down, all right? But what we can do is we can still get into pressure and jump and trap and use our athleticism to steal. So we'll look, we, we have a hit series with the Basketball Australia, Basketball New South Wales style of play. That looks to trap, it looks to be more aggressive, it looks to create opportunities for turnovers. So we'll just quickly look at that, but it starts the same. So boys, just get a lead for me. Just lead down, get a catch. Now in our hit series, we're looking to go and jump into pressure. We, we measure it by the court. So our 40 hit is our full court. In the full court is our 40, you know, 30 is three quarter court, 20 is half court, you know, 10 would be in the quarter court. So we break it down that way. In our 40 hit, we're looking to come and jump the ball carry with a trap. So again, Jeremy is on the plug, the ball's gone in, he's looking to trap, but again, your teaching points are all about angles. So if Jeremy just heads this way, where would you drive? This way. You might, or you'd probably try to split me, right? So what Jeremy's got to be aware of is the concepts all align. So Jeremy's first job as a plug was to get back and plug. It's the same concept here, but now we're hitting it. So now you've got to get back and then you've got to get this angle where we block off this, we shadow it, we use the sideline as a third defender and we're looking to trap it here. So come and get it. Good. Now. The point guard only has three options, unless he's going to throw it long to the five man. He's got down the line, it's natural for you to be in denial, all right? Because there's pressure, we're one third, two thirds opposite the ball, good, all right? We're daring that pass, that's a stealing pass if they want to throw that one. Now, our four man's left alone. So we want to create pressure, we might create a steal there. But if we don't and the ball reverses, we're looking to jam this. So it's really difficult for Jeremy to sprint back and get back in front if he's got a head of steam. So what we do is you were in one third, two thirds, gotta take a little bit of a risk and a gamble, all right? As soon as the ball's there, sorry, throw the ball back for me. We're starting to cheat up one third, two thirds. I'm reading the eyes of the point guard. If he's looking to throw this one, I'm seeing if I can steal it. If he's looking this way, I'm on the sprint. And as that ball goes, I need to, just catch there for me. I need to jam this one for time. Because if I don't take away time, we get beat in pressure. So I might not necessarily create a steal, but what I am creating is a little bit of up-tempo chaos, moving the ball around. Why we jam it is because if this guy gets the ball and has open space, he's busting out. We're probably four on three, maybe three on two. But if I can jam it and just make him get on the back foot first, that gives Jeremy or whoever you're releasing time to sprint back. We might rotate, depending on what your philosophies are, that's what your teaching points are. So it doesn't necessarily change, but we're just looking at ways that we can change the tempo. So trapping it here, trapping it halfway, you know, zone might be an option to slow things down. Defensively, how do you control tempo? All right, so that's our, that's our full court stuff. For me, me personally, I would, yeah. So the rules say the same, come back for me, Jeremy. So for me, the rules don't change so that the kids are all on the same page. So when the ball goes opposite you, where do you jump to? Help, right? So you're already in help. You see that that's open. So he's already halfway there. If he's done the right thing of jumping to help as the balls change sides. And it makes more sense for Jeremy or whoever's seen it to release out this way. If you come up against a great passing team, again, you might weigh up the benefits, positives and negatives of going for this, but that's what a press is. A press is trying to create chaos, trying to create steals. You might get burnt once or twice, but as long as your rules are natural for these guys on the floor where they're not thinking, 
it's you know naturally jumping to help, then you create more opportunities for yourself. Uh, just come on back for me, boys. So just get, uh, can I get an inbounder, please? Let's do this, actually. Can I get you two guys up on the wing? Can I get you two guys on the block for me? Oh, sorry, you two. No, no, you guys jump off. Just throw the ball out there. So again, so what I would do, similar to what Kurt I did, is I would build this thing up working on those positions. So, um, you know, you've got your alley drill for one-on-one, -on -one, and we won't show that. We might just send it through. But what I want to do is I want to build up those positions. So right now, I just start with two on two. I focus on the dog and the plug and getting that right. I like to add a little game-like element to each one. So again, you're gonna be inbounding for us. Jeremy's gonna be the plug, all right? You're gonna be offense right now, so you've got the ball. You're gonna jump straight into defense, all right? Because defense is a mentality. How quickly can we go from scoring or missing to bang, jumping into our pressure? So we're just gonna lay it up. Good, so you've scored, you've got, your first thought is, I've got to find my man because I'm dogging it. Jeremy's first thought is jumping on the ball and shadowing it to one side, and we're into it. We're throwing it in, good, we're playing, you can't get beat sideline, all right, and we're gonna play in the full court, all right? Jeremy's got to help. If the ball gets shifted, Jeremy, good, you're on the ball, you can't get beat sideline because your helper's jumping in the middle, so naturally we're teaching those habits of jump to the ball when it goes. Jump back on, contain my man. And my rules are just don't get beat down the sideline because your helper is in the middle. All right, here we go, boys. Let's see one. Next four guys be ready to jump in either of those spots. Good, lay it up. Good, jump straight on it, jump straight on it, quick. Freeze. Where'd you go? Yeah, you've got to get behind him and force him that dead corner. If he doesn't make you go here, don't go there. I want you to play basketball still. I want you to beat him, because if you beat him, then I get to coach him. Yes. Go from there. Good, here we go, here we go, jump on it. Good, 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 good. Jump around, good. Nice job, help him, Jeremy, good. Good, play it out, boys. Here we go, give me next four. So the, the natural thing that happens defensively, go boys, is that we overhelp. So you would have seen on that one, Jeremy jumped too much to the ball. He's, as a plug, he's just trying to slow him down. If he makes him half freeze for a second, that's great. Keeps our guy in front, we don't get beat, we don't get into rotations. As Soon as he overcommits, we throw it over the top, we get beat. Good, jump to plug. Turn him, turn him, turn him. Finish it out, here we go boys, next one, next one. Here we go, score it. Good, nice job, nice job. Good, go, here we go, next ones, here we go. And for me, philosophically, I like to let him screw it up a few times, you know. First thing he did was, oh, I forgot. Great, you know, if he recognized it, I didn't have to tell him. You know, he's already going next time. If I don't jump into this spot, I'm gonna be in trouble. Good, so they've had a few reps now. They've got to play. They're sick of me talking now. I'll probably freeze it and refine it. Quick, boys, quick, Let's figure it out. Here we go, jump on it, jump on it. Freeze, come back. Quick, 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 let's go. You've got the ball here. Good, 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 jump on it. All right, so again, job of the plug, uh, sorry, job of the dog, is we wanna get ball pressure. So if you feel like you can guard him a little bit closer without getting beat, I absolutely encourage you to do it. Where's your help? Middle, so you might take a step over this way. You can't get beat sideline, all right? The plug man, we've got a little bit of a bad habit now is our man's taking off and we're just turning and following. We're not seeing the ball. So this is a perfect opportunity. Just use your hands. Ball, man. Now, if he takes off, which he might do in this drill, 
it's great. I just get used to dropping with it. I'm still a plug, even if he keeps going. Keep going. I'm still a plug, I'm still a helper. If you get beat, go, go down the middle. Try to chase to get in front. I'm still a helper. I'm just trying to slow to let you get back in front. All right, cool with that. Go from the start for me, boys. You're still one third, two thirds. You're helping because the ball, we want to slow it down. Here we go, score it. Jump straight into it, boys. Jump straight into it. Good, good, good. Up pressure, pressure, good. Good, don't get beat sideline, help him. Good, there you go, nice job. Good, 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 good. Not too bad, stole about three. Here we go, boys. Stole about three or four seconds in the shot clock. We built a wall, and hopefully the rest of our guys have got back into a defensive position. Good, plug, Jeremy. All right, here we go. Can I please get offense and defense on the wing there? Two guys down here that are gonna inbound and then I need uh, offense and defense in the middle circle. So jump on, yep, stay with your partners. So offense and defense, jump on. So light team is scoring it. So dark team, you're gonna be on defense. Normal basketball, light team scoring. Dark, stay there, dark team are gonna be, uh, sorry, light team are gonna be on defense. Good with that. All right, now all we do is we just build this thing up. So I'm gonna give them the option right now and a little bit of freedom. Sometimes I might, if I wanna work on something, I might say go ball side or go opposite so that we work on jumping. Right now, boys, the person in the middle, you can choose. You can go one wing or the other. Doesn't worry me the defense has got to react. So go boys, score for me, jump straight into it. Good, so his ball side is denied. Good, and we create a steal. Now that's not great offensively, but again, basketball's not taught in isolation. So everything that Curtis has done still applies, but my focus now is, great job, we got a steal. In the back of my mind, I'm super upset that we just threw a turnover to the middle of nowhere. Rotate, boys, here we go. But my focus is defense right now. If I hadn't done a little bit of offense before and you have an assistant coach, you might be able to tap your assistant and go, hey, you focus on the O. I'm just promoting defense right now because that's the goal for me right now is I want to get stops, I want to promote that. He got a steal, he was in the right spot. He was one third, two thirds, great. Here we go, boys. Good, dog it, dog it, plug it. Good, good, good. Good, keep going, keep going. Here we go boys, jump on so we're ready to go. Jump on. So give me two there, good, two there. All right, quick boys, need one at halfway. Here we go, a pair at halfway. So light's gonna be on defense here. Lighter on defense, here we go. Lighter on defense, lighter on defense. Good, plug it, plug it, plug it. Good, good, be a helper there, good. Good, good, nice job, nice job. Here we go, rotate, rotate. Here we go boys, jump on. Good, good, good. Plug it, Jeremy, plug it. Good, be a helper there, good, good, good. There you go, be a helper now, be a helper. Good. Good, not too bad. All right, boys, grab a quick drink. So again, depending on what you want to achieve out of your defense, my big challenge to you is make sure that those philosophies align. So, you know, if you're jumping to help in the half court, then in the full court, you should be teaching the same thing. Ball, help, you know, jump into that one third, two thirds, and then you can get creative with where you trap, what your rotations are, all right? But as long as those philosophies align, then you'll be able to create some advantages on the defensive end. And again, for me, it's just about creating tempo and controlling that tempo. What will